Hey, welcome back. Today, I just want to briefly touch on something that I consider one of the biggest hindrances, not only in the church, but in the world, from keeping people from being successful, either in what God's called them to do or just in life in general, and that is comfort. There's an old saying that comfort is the enemy of the soul. And if you Google the word comfort is the enemy, it will come up everything. Uh, comfort is the enemy of success, of the enemy of advancement, of enemy of education. Ed, anything beneficial that you can think of, comfort is the enemy in some way or another. And what do I mean by this, the enemy? Well, we all want to be comfortable. We all want a comfy house. We want to drive a comfy car. Uh, we want to eat foods that make us feel comfortable. But that search for comfort isn't necessarily beneficial to us. I'm not saying that you have to be uncomfortable all the time, but going to the gym isn't comfortable. Eating a proper diet isn't comfortable, but the benefits of that momentary or, or discomfort is beneficial. People look better, people feel better, people have, are in better overall health because of that discomfort of getting out and exercising and eating a better diet. And these are just, just physical examples of being uncomfortable or enduring uncomfort for the sake of something beneficial that you want. Certainly the flesh likes to be comfortable. And without getting into theology, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna state that I think that the body, and, and, and for those of you who haven't heard, here's how we're made up. You are a spirit and you have a soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions, and you inhabit this body of flesh. Now this body, I believe, it is my contention, we can discuss this if you disagree, but has a limited mind and will of its own to some degree. And you will see this in evidence if you fast at all. Uh, and I'm talking about extended fasting, uh, more than just a couple days, because this body will begin to speak up and it will, it will begin to like express its desire for food. If you're trying a diet of, I'm going to limit myself to water and vegetables for two weeks, your body will chime in at a certain point and start trying to bargain with you and negotiate with you and you know what about if we include whole grain breads or something like that it, it will just it i'm telling you it does it all the time in fact i believe one of one of the many beneficial components to fasting and there have been documented uh, not only uh, in the physical but also spiritual but one of them is disciplining your body and your soul to do things that you don't necessarily want to do by forcing your body like we're gonna go without food or we're gonna just eat these things for this period of time. And like I said, you will get some blowback from your body. It will argue with you and try and negotiate and strike a bargain with you for different kinds of food. And if you don't believe me, just try it. But more than just physical discomfort or physical pleasures that, that we tend to seek out, what seems to stop more people is discomfort of the mind. We don't wanna to have to do anything that's uneasy or causes anxiety or more a larger section fear we don't want to we don't want to face things that are fearful and one of the truths about the kingdom of god that i've found is that some of the most exciting and beneficial opportunities in the kingdom that god presents to you are fearful at first they look scary they look very scary and a lot of people will just back away it's not a very inviting door it's not pretty it's not gilded in gold it's dark it's just foreboding looking and it causes fear and even when even if you know god is calling me to this some people get to that door that opportunity and they just go I, no i don't think so it looks sketchy uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna do something else and they miss out on this huge opportunity or blessing that god's bringing them to if they'd only walk through the door and in my life i've noticed that it is scary i've done things that are really scary but the consistent thing i noticed is God's always with you. And so you take that first couple scary steps and you realize, oh, oh yeah, you're right there. You're with me the whole time, okay. And then it's not so scary. And you're able to walk through and realize the provision, the blessing that God has for you there because you went through that scary barrier. One of the other things I've noticed from my own life is that if you do uncomfortable things enough, you build up a tolerance to them. And what was once super uncomfortable now isn't a big deal at all. Uh, and I say it again, again, some people get tired of hearing it, but I, I feel like nothing bad happens. But when I tell stories of things that happened 
during my day to other people, they're like, oh God, it sounds just horrible. And it's like, uh, I guess maybe it is if I stop and think about it. But because I do uncomfortable stuff all the time, you just it just is stuff. It's not really that uncomfortable anymore. And there's a saying that goes around the world, and this is true, and this is so true. And if you can apply this, if you can get a hold of it and apply it to your life, it'll help you in untold aspects, not in the world, in business, in finance, in your spiritual walk, in your marriage, whatever, anywhere that you could apply this. And that is those who are willing to do what others won't can have what others can't. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go around your whole life being uncomfortable and miserable. God wants you to be happy and full of joy. And one of the most effective weapons that you could use against the enemy is marching through uncomfortable situations with joy and thanksgiving. Man, that is powerful. So powerful. That completely demoralizes the enemy. When he can't knock you off your bubble because you maintain your peace in every situation, that is powerful. And I'm not saying that in the kingdom you always have to be uncomfortable. Again, God loves you and there's times that he wants you to just be at ease be comfortable, and he'll bring blessings and stuff into your life to make you more comfortable. But he also knows that there's also going to be other times where you're going to have to face some uncomfortable situations. That's the only way people grow. Growing is not comfortable. Moving to the next level in anything is not comfortable. It's not just this comfortable slide. You've got to grow. You've got to endure. You have to stretch yourself in everything, in the natural and in the spiritual world. So. I am constantly trying to take stock of my life and ask myself, have I settled into complacency, into a place where I'm just comfortable and I don't want to do other things? Or if I'm presented with an opportunity that initially I'm like, ah, I don't want to be a part of that, I have to ask myself, is, is this a hidden opportunity God's bringing to me that just seems like it's going to be a pain in the butt, but there's something beneficial on the other side? And so that's a conversation between you and the Holy Ghost. So anyway, I just wanted to bring this up. I hope it blesses you. I'll talk to you next time.